All right, let's have a look down here. This gate was not open before. Oh, you are chattable. Just don't give me a reason, heretics. All right, you're a dickhead. Cool. Uh, Le Masque de Lyon. We cheered when honoured was her might, but many more deserve a thought. For though she was the first a knight, her ken and kind have always fought. From a plaque with a dedication, Le Masque de Lyon, sponsored by Princess Corinne's first cavalier. Uh, for those we stood beside. We maintain an Inquisition presence on Commander Cullen's orders. This has been received as you might expect. Yeah, I bet. Fantastically, right? Uh, the head of Madame Snappy Snips. <laughs> what? Mascot of Le Masque de Lyon. Named in jest, but genuinely respected. It's like Boaty McBoatface. The Grand Mam, as she is also called, was the last dragon brought down by Sir Koenig, the previous owner of the cafe. A spirited hunter, Koenig came of age in the years following the sighting that named the era. While others were quick to assume the tales of ancient Navarran dragon hunters must have been exaggerated, he tracked the gradual increase in dragon numbers and size. Koenig believed we had yet to see a true return of the beasts of legend and that the specimens of his day were young, despite their ferocity. It is a cruel victory, but today we know Sir Koenig to have been correct, even as he may have fallen to his own expertise. He is, was, years overdue from his last hunt, and for the rest of us, travel wary. What we thought to be the pinnacle of dragon strength may have been closer to adolescence. The sisters of Madame Snippy Sni Snappy Snips may have left their siblings far behind. Yikes. A uh, different simple script on the back of, the sta of a stable report marked with red paint. Thank you, friends, for helping good Lady Keris. Saw those who asked about Herald enter Third Passage. Could not stay to see them exit. Not of heroes, Maferath and Sacrifice. Andraste, our lady, the sword in the fire against Tevinter. Betrayed to the Empire in exchange for a kingdom. Maferath, now synonymous with treachery, but would... And now, now synonymous with treachery. But would Andraste have won, and if not, what would we have lost? Let us look not just at the act, but at the why of it. As the armies of faith pierced the Imperial homeland, it was revealed not as a wave, but as an arrow. And as any hunter will attest, if your aim is not true, there is no returning to the bow. We must consider how much of Our Lady's victory to this point was against the true Imperium, and how much was against the echoes of Empire. Andraste the Inspiration may not have considered such. But Maferath the general fought for homeland, not visions. Was it victory or defeat that his betrayal held at bay? Maferath made the deal that killed Our Lady, that is fact. And when Andraste died, Maferath was gifted everything from the southern plains south. How generous and impossible to hold this must have seemed. Let us look on Maferath and the legacy he divided among his sons, not with an eye for accusation, but from a tactical consideration. For he must have known that mere rivals had never stopped to Vinter. What if he set about creating peers, and none of this was accident? How then fared Iserath, Evrion, and Verald? Hmm. That is an interesting, different perspective to look at events from. I like. The summer home of Messer Glubs. <laughs> is that a name of a fish? Messer Glubs? A seasonal home for the childhood pet of the twin sons of Empress Yvette. The nature of Messer Glubs remains unknown, save that he was a gift from Ravani Ambassador and he was eventually released to the sea after taking the hand of a sluggish page. What the fuck? What was he? Some fucking piranha motherfucker? He took someone's hand? God damn. God damn! Okay, I'm not going to bother talking to the guard. He's just going to go like, Ooh, I hope I get to fuck you up. The Lover's Alcove. Every district has one. At least one. And the question must be, why is a place meant for dalliance declared in such an obvious way? And the answer, of course, is that obviousness is the entirety of the point. When manners and station will not allow impassioned words, such corners are places to be seen not being seen. Entering with a paramour is as much a declaration as singing, it out, as singing out in joy, which one of good standing must never do. The alcove is thus a dignified means of announcing romantic affiliation, either for genuine partnership or to appear as such in order to spare a suitor a refusal. A refusal. Dignity, of course, requiring that one does not also make use of the darkness for actual physical gratification. This has, of course, never occurred. <laughs> yeah, At once. definitely. No fucks given here. Absolutely not. None. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Yes, 
Yes, I'm sorry. Minding the duties of the ailing mother, Havara. I am rather overwhelmed. Please, move along. Forgive me. I am unsure whether I meant to extend chantry services to you, and that troubles me greatly. All right. Not of heroes, the death of diversity. What could hold back an empire? Another. What could hold back so defined a people as Tavinta? Another. Let us consider if eldest Isarath was not meant to honor Mafrath, for his for the father's fate was already condemned by hidden betrayal. Let us consider that Isarath was told to turn from ties to Mafrath to look forward, not back. What of his actions then? Isarath was granted a land of tribes, of scattered alliance. His answer was the grand unification, which most condemn as arrogance. Sweeping changes in trade, relocations to break local allegiances, all to favor centralized trade and power. Cities were, level were leveled to expand a new capital, a powerful and influential city of a new nation, Val Royo of Olay. And all in the name of not lost Andraste, but of holding back looming Tavinta. Power was united, but cultures less so. Investing everyone in the new Olay stra stratified the classes, and through it all spread a bitterness that a Ferelden ruled. Isarath avoided the stain of his father, for he was seen as victim too, but he was still Alamari. What if, dear readers, the final unifying element came not from accident or even the deliberate actions of Isarath, but from a common hatred, and not the common hatred of the day? The sons of Mafrath would succeed at creating a peer for Tavinta, but only at the cost of themselves. These are really interesting. I'm really liking that series of fucking, like, different views on things. Her Majesty's Convenience. The plaque reads, For Her Majesty's Convenience, wood and vines defy the very sun and rain. At once. You're not chatty, are you? No. Not a chatty Cathy. We're already like a third of the way through the level that we got when we arrived here. And I think that's like almost entirely from just reading stuff. These XP boosts are nice. Uh, here grows one of many strange trophies returned from the liberation of Kirkwall in 760 Storm, where brave Olesian forces turned back the unstoppable Canari. So, they weren't unstoppable then. A cutting salvage from a burning dreadnought was presented to Empress Cyril, and it was tended to full growth by the careful hands of Valroyo's master landscapers. Ooh. We got ourselves a shippity shoppity. Inquisition, eh? I'll sell, but if the Chantry censures you, I'm not liable. No offense, but I have to live here, and Valroyo can be traditional. Traditional, yeah. And who doesn't love a bit of tradition? Uh, right, anything I give? Two fucks to rub together. No. Nothing I care about. Okay. Uh, is this locked? Yup. Yar. And is this locked? Also Yar. Okay. So now let's try going upstairs. Did I talk to you? What is the Grand Cathedral thinking? Cathedral? That's not divide. how you say that. Show us the way. Do you know the way? Alright, uh, we need to try going to the other floor. Uh, right here, I guess. A season of the four afoul. At this window, the thief Treadwell did witness the attempted assault of Lady Castine. He surrendered his chance for escape to catch and hold her assailant, a bard of Lord Halloween. Hero thief, foiled bard, and conspiring noble were all censured as per their station and relevant action. Lashings in labour disappeared and ostracised for the social season, respectively. The scandal played out far longer in the theatrically serialised adaptation, which reimagined the three as siblings separated at birth, competing for Lady Castine's hand at her orchestration. The conclusion was relatively accurate to the original event, save the punishment of the thief and noble being swapped to comic effect. Generally, good reviews received, though some thought the height of the lady's hair to be unrealistic. Ah, what a tragic mistake to make. Uh, a scrap of parchment hastily torn from an ornate document stuffed into its hiding space with a large red sock. And we are to obey well. We meet at three bells to discuss how best to serve the new way. Scrawled below, Herald go at time, praise Adrast. 
Taken together, the messages reveal a time, path, and key to a location on the world map. Do they? Well, I'm glad the Inquisitor's smarter than I am, because, uh, I did not get that. Uh, right. Is there anything down here? Looks like. Absolutely not. Fantastic. You going for a bit of tightrope walking there, Cassandra? Don't blame you. It's fun until you fall off. Not of heroes, division and distance. For a supposed creature of jealousy and greed, Mafrath is less so indeed. For while his word brought low the bride of the maker, his prize was quickly divided and distanced. Let us consider the lesser of the sons in this matter. Of everyone we, lo we know little. The middle boy, he was tasked with ruling the lands to be the marches. No claim by the father was made, no in my name to humble. And that freedom is shown in the result, for everyone himself was the least concerned with power. He among all, he among all led by example, not demand and spoke only of sacrifice. When betrayal was revealed, everyone axed as a man broken, dispersing his holdings to the various tribes. It was a penance that spared him his family, but it also dispersed influence. To this day, the free marches are scattered. Of Verald, more is known, for his actions bring him to the start of our nation. But his folly begins in Navarra, where we must ask, was this the will of a betrayer father, or a mistake of youth? Mafrath gave rule to the youngest, Verald, and never claimed Navarra. Never did he sit on the throne, and he is thought to have rarely visited. But his name is hated there most of all, for it was bartered for legacy by the sun. Unlike everyone, Verald spoke not as example, but to claim. Never his name was mentioned without that of his mother and father. His claims were bold, their actions were his, and their thoughts all shared. But from the father on his throne in Ferelden, no word is recorded. And we wonder, was it deliberate? For when the betrayal was revealed, all with ties to Mafarath were, were vilified. And so strong were the ties that Verald had drawn that his court was killed to a man, and he was forced to flee. Had he kept silent, as seems the will of the knowing father, and had he girded as his father had guided the elder, Isarath, then Verald might have remained to rule. But that would require that the betrayer not be as he is drawn, and it would have kept Verald in Navarra, and it would have kept Verald from Orlais, and it would have prevented the further betrayal that truly birthed Orlais. Cool. Uh, boop. The Randy Dowager Quarterly. Uh, the Randy Dowager inspire ignites winter passions with the collected conscripted by love, being a tale of heroes come legends. The Grey Wardens and their shining duty to claim those of promise who most suit their joining. Uh, da -da -da. Lady herself says always a classic when wardens come calling or dare one suggest the reverse. <laughs> Four scarves fluttered in shock out of five. Fantastic. Boop. Uh, is there? A, there's more to see around here, I assume. Yes. Okay. The waiting alcove, forever empty in anticipation of artistic endeavor, worthy of the envy and insidious jealousy of the capital in a glorious endeavor. Mad shit. Empty as his head. <laughs> it's some very, very mad shit. Uh, the pillars of her everlasting flame, ignited, 530 exalted, capped, 562 exalted, forgive them their petty nature, for the soot of your eternal flames blackened their silks. It's a very, very mad shit. So, nothing back this way, okie doke. That's another fast travel. Have you got anything for me? Ah, the Herald of Andraste. Does me. Is there something I might help you with? Hmm. The only reason that would exist is if there is somehow something I can find that I can then say she can help me with, right? Because what would be the point of having this dialogue here if the only thing is nothing? No, thank you, sister. I feel like that implies that there is something I can find that she then can help me with. Curious. Really? Nothing? Hmm. All that way for SFA? Sweet fuckle.
The mystery and meaning of eight silks. Eight silks drape across Bell Marsh. Oh, this is the red things. Yeah. Uh, eight silks that frame the sky and shade the calm of commerce. But why eight? That question is posed time and again by visitor and philosopher. What in the grand history of our capital is displayed in this subtle choice? The ages? But we have had nine, and what fool would have made such a prediction? There is nothing in the Orlesian mindset, in the heart of Orlais, that suggests even a hint of accepting an end to our way. Perhaps then something less flattering, but veiled. Is it opined that the eight represent- Oh, it, it is opined that the eight represents the twin boys of Empress Yvette, born 799, which heralded the Blessed Age, being the entwined loops of the number eight itself, not its value. The more irreverent suggests that the eight could as easily be a slight against Yvette's figure, <laughs> for she was rumoured to be stout but determined in her choice of corsetry. Both theories are scoffed at by historians as mere number fetish. What emerges when we consider the longevity of the question is not that there is meaning to be found, but that it is ingrained in us to search as though there is. For we need to believe that such a prominent detail of the greatest city the world has ever known must be thoroughly rife with meaning. And so certain are we that we discount even the architect, who grew so annoyed of the question that he had the answer engraved on his memorial. There were 16 rods. <laughs> How compares his fact to our search for truth? That is very funny. Uh... Okay, and then the highest level would be here. Anything in the corner? No. The Randy Dowager, uh, da -da -da, the Horned Ones, Tale of Conquest, both of Nation and Heart. Demands are satisfied as bronze giants share their explosive passions. Uh, only for those of particular taste. Delicate buds should remain in the garden while the bold of us flower. Five scars fluttered in shock out of five. Okay. People getting laid in that one. Can we do anything here? Nope. Fast travel. Get the fuck out of the way. That's just pinging the door, right? Yeah. Pinging the door again. All the things in this world are finite. What one man gains, another has lost. Those who steal from their brothers and sisters. Very little up here, it seems. There was a ton to read in the lower levels. Really nothing? Pinging a door again? Yep. Just what we needed. Really nothing? Ah! Oh, one thing! And it's tiny. Longing in the upper court. My, weaknesses, my weakness bids me not by chance to gaze upon the upper court. Where shadows of our final dance and wishes of my heart consort. Alright, that's everything then. Uh, let's pop a save, because I'm really curious if you can actually die from fall damage. Whee! Wait, is there no fall damage here at all? Oh no, it, I just saw numbers. Nice. Okay, is that everything? I feel like I've been about as thorough as I can be. No doubt someone will be mad at me for missing something, but I feel like that is a pretty thorough fucking look. Um, return to the Chantry for that. Uh, Champions of the Just. Templars have left Valroyo and refused to negotiate with anyone. Gather enough power, then work with the advisors to make contact with the Templars. Okay, so this is... There's two limiting factors, I guess. Level gating is one. This was level four to seven. Although there hasn't been any combat, so I don't know why levels, why I would say level four to seven here. But level gating is one, and power gating is the other. If I hadn't done a bunch of shit, then I would have to now go and grind power. But because I have done a bunch of shit, I already have 33 power. Fantastic. Obviously, I've done more than you need. Uh, but yes, that is definitely how they gate stuff, it seems. Uh, the inner circle. Wait, a friend of Red Jenny is in the inner circle category? Wait, so is this one. Hmm, this is where Varric's quest and Solus's quest is. So are these both going to lead to new companions? Because I think the inner circle is your companions, right? Uh, 
Use the world map to travel to the meeting point. Okay. The Imperial Enchanter. The Imperial Enchanter. Vivienne de Fair, the first Enchanter of Montsimard, has extended an invitation to a salon at the Chateau of Duke Bastien de Ghislaine. Huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, right, that's just those things. Uh, inform Bronn the watchtowers have been built. Yes. Need to do that. Do I want to go back to the Hinterlands, though? Not massively. This is going to piss me off forever, that I'm forever going to have a Storm Coast fucking quest, because I fucking picked up a thing after I'd handed everything in, and it's fucking Spydraker. You sons of bitches. You sons of bitches. That's going to be in my inventory forever. <laughs> Even though it's not a real quest. I can't abandon it. Let me abandon the shit quest. Fuck you. How dare you. How fucking dare you. Um, right. So. World map. Oh, we can go straight here. Okay. Uh, sure. A friend of Red Jenny. If I might have a moment of your time. Grand Enchanter Fiona. Oh. Leader of the Mage Rebellion. Hello. Is it not dangerous for you to be here? I heard of this gathering, and I wanted to see the fabled Herald of Andraste with my own eyes. Queen of the base. It's a breach you seek. Perhaps you should look among your fellow mages. Yeah, no shit. What? <laughs> we have nothing in common. Why the fuck would I say that? Uh, you weren't at the Conclave. I'm surprised the leader of the mages wasn't at the Conclave. Yes. You were supposed to be, and yet somehow you avoided death. As did the Lord Seeker, you'll note. Both of us sent negotiators in our stead in case it was a trap. I won't pretend I'm not glad to live. I lost many dear friends that day. It disgusted Disgusts me to think the Templars will get away with it. I'm hoping you won't let them. You think the Templars did it? So you think the Templars are responsible? Why wouldn't she? Lucius hardly seems broken up over his losses, if he's concerned about them at all. You heard him. You think he wouldn't happily kill the Divine to turn people against us? So yes, I think he did it. More than I think you did it, at any rate. Will you help us? Does that mean the mages will help us? We are willing to discuss it with the Inquisition, at least. Consider this an invitation to Redcliffe. To Redcliffe? Come Hog. meet with the mages. An alliance could help us both. Well, I guess I go I'm going back to the fucking I hinterlands then. I see you there. Au revoir, my lady Herald. Come. Let us return to Haven. Uh, I mean, that's not where I've selected on the map, I'm afraid to tell you. Or is it going to take me back to Haven anyway, or is it going to do what I clicked on the map? Uh, this background looks different, so I think it's doing what I clicked. Our survey says, do, 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 our survey says, do, do, do. Yep, this is new. Uh, should I chow down? What's my health like? No, my health refill. Whoa! Oh, hello! I didn't even realize. Hi! All right, first combat of the day. Uh, are you just gonna, like, stay there? Because, no, you're not. Motherfucker. Ah, he ran into it. Ninety-five. Is ninety-five good? No. Oh, hey, I've got mist around me. That's the fucking thing I bought for Varric. Nice, 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 nice. Working already. Uh, okay, we're going in there. Anything over here? No. Boop. Andraste. How much did you expend to discover me? It must have weakened the Inquisition immeasurably. 
I don't know who you are. <laughs> Fool me. <laughs> I'm too important for this to be an accident. I'm too important. <laughs> oh, it must be, it must be a setup. Just say what? What is that? Banter. Holy fuck. Ugh. Squishy one, but you heard me, right? Just say what? Rich tits always try for more than they deserve. Blah, blah, blah. Obey me. Arrow in my face. So, you follow the notes well enough. Glad to see you're... And you're an elf. Well, hope you're not too elfy. What do you I mean? mean? You're a fucking elf too. The important thing is you glow. You're the herald thingy. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? Hope you're not too elfy. Uh... Some say that. Who are you? Some believe I'm the Herald of Andraste. But who are you, and what's this about? No idea. I don't know this idiot from manners. My people just said the Inquisition should look at him. Your people? Elves? Red Jenny people? <laughs> no. People people. Name's Sarah. This is cover. Get round it. For the reinforcements. Don't worry. Someone tipped me their equipment shed. They've got no breaches. All right. Why didn't you take their weapons? Because no breaches. <laughs> Doesn't really feel like my man is regenning faster, I've got to say. Friends really came through with that tip. No breaches. <laughs> okay, you said that three times now. So, Herald of Andraste. You're a strange one. I'd like to join. Uh, I'd like a real introduction. How about we get to know each other first? You know, names and such. One name. No, wait, two. It's... Well, it's like this. I sent you a note to look for hidden stuff by my friends. The friends of Red Jenny. That's me. Well, I'm one. So is a fence in Montfort, some woman in Kirkwall. There were three in Starkhaven, brothers or something. It's just a name, yeah? It lets little people, friends, be part of something while they stick it to nobles they hate. So here, in your face, I'm Sarah. The friends of Red Jenny are sort of out there. I use them to help you. Plus arrows. Okay. Uh... So you're offering... Is this a choice? Am I choosing what she's offering here? And it's... Disguised as a question, but like whichever one I say is what we'll get or something. Uh, I feel like they'd be best as spies. The Inquisition has spies already. Can you add to these professionals? Here's how it is. You important people are up here shoving your cods around. Blah, blah. I'll crush you. I'll crush you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, crush you. <clears throat> then you've got cloaks and spy kings like this tit. Or was he one of the little knives, all serious with his little knife? All those secrets, and what gave him up? Some houseboy who don't know shite, but knows a bad person when he sees one. So no, I'm not knifey shiv dark, all hidden. But if you don't listen down here too, you risk your breaches. Like those guards? I stole their... For... Look, do you need people or not? I want to get everything back to normal. Like you. Huh. <laughs> she leaves forever. <laughs> uh, what? Are, who exactly are your people? So who are your friends of Red Jenny? You must know them. Oh, it's not hard to understand if you're not trying to waste your day on it. Someone little always hates someone big. And unless you don't eat, sleep or piss, you're never far from someone little. Doesn't always work out, but a lot of people hated this guy. Someone got a laugh, someone got even, someone got paid. And someone has to have it explained to them that free help is good. Why ask if I glow? Back there you wanted to know if I glowed. Why? That's what you do, innit? You walked out of somewhere and now you glow. Andraste's herald. True or not, it seemed like the easiest way to know it was you. True or not? Well, that's what they say on all. Look, don't get ahead yet. I want to help this... whatever it is. Inquisition. <laughs> Sounds petty and criminal. 
You sound like a thief who acts out petty revenge fantasies. And that might be bad. Oh, right. You want to prop that guy up so I can say my sorries? Bad things should happen to bad people. We find someone not so bad, maybe he'll end up not so dead. Good enough? Uh, but you didn't know him. You say that like it's obvious, but you didn't know him. I knew about him. That's just rumor. Look, I'd have been fine stripping his guards and nicking his stuff. Turns out he deserved worse. Or was him trying to kill you a good thing? Are you the baddie? Didn't think so. Uh, sure. Join for now. All right, Sarah. I can use you and your friends. Yes! Getting good before you're too big to like. That'll keep your breaches where they should be. Plus extra breaches because I have all these... You have merchants who buy that piss, yeah? Got to be worth something. Anyway, Haven. See you there, Herald. This will be grand. Right. Not sure how I feel about her. Uh, okay, so she's a rogue. She's an archer rogue. Uh, she seemed a little bit annoying. I'm going to go ahead and not put her in the party for now. <laughs> uh, quest complete. Lovely jubbly. Aggressive bow. Too many breaches. Okay, that's kind of funny that it's actually a loot thing. The fact that she said it like four times in a row, not so funny. Felt like it was trying too hard, I guess. I'll take it. Can't go in there. Nope. That everything? Seems like it. All right. Uh, and then another one. Vivienne. Did that say despair demons are vulnerable to fire? I'm pretty sure it did. That's good, because I'm a big fire boy. Lady Lavellan, on behalf of the Inquisition. Yo! It's me! What a pleasure to meet you, my lady. Seeing the same faces at every event becomes so tiresome. So you must be a guest of Madame de Fer. Or are you here for Duke Bastien? Are you here on business? I have heard the most curious tales of you. I cannot imagine half of them are true. Uh, you know of me? What have you heard about me? Some say that when the veil opened, Andraste herself delivered you from the Fade. Madame de Fer? I'm not familiar with that name. I was invited here by first enchanter Vivienne. Madame de Fer is a fond nickname the court has given Lady Vivienne. I've heard she finds it amusing. What does it mean? I don't know what de Fer means that would be a fond nickname thing. Tell me about the Duke. I've heard very little about Duke Bastien. He hasn't been seen much at court lately. His business with the Council of Heralds often takes him from home for long periods. It can't be good for a man of his years. And, of course, there's the civil war. Bastien probably wishes to distance himself from the actions of his one-time son-in-law. Tearing up the Dales in a foolish bid for power? It will end in disgrace for Gaspar. Everyone knows it. Uh, everything they've told you is fact. Everything you've heard? Completely true. Better and better. The Inquisition should attend more of these parties. The Inquisition. What a lot of pig shit. Oh, yeah? Washed up sisters and crazed seekers. No one can take them seriously. 
Everyone knows it's just an excuse for a bunch of political outcasts to grab power. Where's my renegade quick time event? Uh, I want justice for the divine. We're restoring peace. This is a holy calling. What's your point? Hmm. It's one of these two. Do they... Yeah, they'd probably be... More inclined to believe this, I guess. Because the divine is... Their girl. That's not true. I'm just searching for Divine Justinia's killer. Of course you are. I'm sure your army is out scouring the hills for her murderer as we speak. We know what your Inquisition truly is. If you were a woman of honor, you'd step outside and answer the charges. My dear Marquis. How unkind of you to use such language in my house to my guests. I feel like I'm going to like this companion. What a sick way to enter. You know such rudeness is intolerable. Uh, Madame Vivienne, I humbly beg your pardon. You should. Whatever am I going to do with you, my dear? My lady, you're the wounded party in this unfortunate affair. What would you have me do with this foolish, foolish man? Oh my god! <laughs> like, actually though? Oh, I really want to say kill him. <laughs> I, that's, probably the, that's probably bad. But I really want to say kill him. It's not coming up with any... This is this is the kind of uh, choice wheel that normally has the rectangle boxes come up to give a little, tiny bit more info, but... Oh my goodness, I want to say kill him so bad! <laughs> but it would be probably not for the best. Oh! What do I do? <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna say let him go. I've got to. It's not my my character is not a murder people for like he didn't actually do anything. He just fucking spoke shittily. But like you don't murder people for speaking shittily. But oh, it would be so tempting. It would be so tempting to actually do that. Holy fuck. I think the Marquis has seen the error of his ways. By the grace of Andraste, you have your life, my dear. Do be more careful with it. <laughs> I'm delighted you could attend this little gathering. I've so wanted to. I'm going to have to YouTube the other outcome there. But I, my, my, uh. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Vivienne, first enchanter of Mont Simard and enchantress to the Imperial Court. My interest in this companion is drastically higher than the previous one. Just because the like the way the way she's been introduced here is just cool as fuck. <laughs> like, what a cool as and sick intro, and she sounds cool as well. Whereas the other one, what was her name, Sarah, was like, it was kind of cool coming in with the the arrow, but then just like the dialogue was just like, eh. What about the Marquis? Is that Marquis going to pose a problem? His aunt is the Vicomtesse of Mont de Glace. Not a powerful family, but well respected and very devout. Alphonse will be disowned for this. It's not the first time he's brought his aunt disgrace, but I'm sure it'll be the last. Banter. And after such a public humiliation, I expect he'll run off to the Dales to join the Empress's war effort. Either to make a good end or to win back a modicum of self respect. Hmm. I wonder how much. I wonder if anything will actually change that he's. Still alive to be a player in events. Uh, a pleasure to meet you. Charmed, Lady Vivian. Ah, but I didn't invite you to the chateau for pleasantries. With Divine Justinia dead, the Chantry's in shambles. Absolute shambles. Only the Inquisition might restore sanity and order to our frightened people. As the leader of the last loyal mages of Thedas, I feel it only right that I lend my assistance. Wait, what does that mean? The last. The last loyal mages of Thedas. What does, what does that mean? Loyal to who? Oh, we can flirt. But let's investigate first. Uh, what are loyal mages? Yeah. You say you led the last of the loyal mages. <laughs> this is literally what I asked. Yeah. To the people of Thedas, of course. 
We have not forgotten the commandment, as some have, that magic exists to serve man. I don't think anyone's I forgotten that. any effort to restore such order. Hmm. I don't think anyone's forgotten that. That's not the point of the rebellion, is not to take power over other people. It's to get themselves out from under the boot. Do you support the circle, then? So you're in favor of returning the mages to the circle, then? Where else can mages safely learn to master their talents? We need an institution to protect and nurture magic. Maker knows. Magic will find neither on its own. I mean... It depends on what... Like, I agree that mages need to be educated, obviously. Like, they have... <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility and all that. Like, obviously they need to learn about it. But if she's saying... Like, if, if we're saying turn the circles into schools and don't lock mages up there and have mages come to learn there and then go back home and we fuck off the Templars and all that, then sure, keep the circles if they are changed in their purpose. But if we're saying... You know, everything was really good when the oppressors were just fucking, you know, stamping on the mages' necks. Then not so much. But then you are a mage yourself, so surely you wouldn't enjoy that either. Hmm. Uh. Wait, didn't we ask that already? Yeah. What do you get out of this? What's in this for you? The same thing anyone gets by fighting this chaos. The chance to meet my enemy, to decide my fate. I won't wait quietly for destruction. Okay. Uh, do you support the Chantry? Are you devout? What's your opinion of the Chantry? I was a great admirer of the late divine Justinia V. Based? The Chantry, at its best, unites the disparate cultures of Thedas and looks after its most vulnerable. Had she lived, Justinia could have accomplished so much. Uh, but the Chantry opposes us. You are well, it does now, but Divine Justinia was the one that was going to set up the, the Inquisition herself, so... They're in no position to officially sanction anything. Besides, my dear, if there is one virtue the Chant of Light teaches us, it is forgiveness. Once the Inquisition has sealed the breach, I'm sure the new Divine will not care in the slightest about official permission. Now that is based. What assistance do you bring? What exactly can you do for the Inquisition? I am well versed in the politics of the Orlesian Empire. I know every member of the Imperial Court personally. I have all the resources remaining to the Circle at my disposal. And I'm a mage of no small talent. Will that do? Yeah, that'll do. Uh, you'll work inside the Court? Does that mean you'd be aiding the Inquisition from the Imperial Palace? Ordinarily, I would be happy to serve as liaison to the Court, but these are not ordinary times. The veil has been ripped apart and there is a hole in the sky. It is now the duty of every mage to work towards sealing the breach. And so I would join the Inquisition on the field of battle. Uh, I'm going to ask this again. I know already, I know I already asked it, but maybe there's another... Because, like, why is it still here? Is there another path I can take you in questioning? You led the last of the loyal... To the people of... We have not... I support any effort to restore such order. Oh, and now it's disappeared. Weird. Um... Is this business or pleasure? Is your interest in the Inquisition, Madame de Fer, or is it more personal? <laughs> Aren't you charming? <laughs> it's professional, of course. Of course! Wait, it's back? Why does this one keep going back? You say you led the to the people. We have not. I support any effort to restore such order. I don't know, that's weird that that one keeps going back. Whatever. Recruit into the Inquisition. Welcome aboard. The Inquisition will be happy to have you, Lady Vivian. Great things are beginning, my dear. I can promise you that. I would love to see the stats for the amount of people who get to this point where you have a new companion saying, Hey, I'm here. I want to join you. And then they click no. Like, it must be like 0.01% or something, right? Like, surely there is hardly anyone who, when presented with new content, a whole new character that can come with you on your journey and have discussions and everything, would say, nah. Like, surely nobody does that, but I bet there is, like, some people out there that do, but, like, surely that's such a harmful, like, detriment to the experience if you just, like, do you want an entire additional character added to your game? Nah, fuck off, all right. Like, I don't know, seems weird. I can't imagine anyone choosing that, but then at the same time, maybe they do. 
Uh, an offer from the Blades of Sarian operation available. Hello. You there. There's a shield in your hand. Lock with it. If this man were your enemy, you'd be dead. He hasn't been available to talk before. Back. The recruits must prepare for a real fight, not a practice one. Yes, Commander. Is it our first We've proper chat time? Of recruits, locals from Haven and some pilgrims. None made quite the entrance you did. I like to stand out. At least I got everyone's attention. That you did. I was recruited to the Inquisition in Kirkwall myself. I was there during the Mage Uprising. I saw firsthand the devastation. Gee, I wonder what so, caused that. Oh, that's right, the Templars. Solution. When she offered me a position, I left the Templars to join her cause. Now it seems we face something far worse. Uh, I believe the mark will help. I must have this mark for a reason. It will work. I'm sure of it. Provided we can secure aid, but I'm confident we can. The Chantry lost control of both Templars and Mages. Now they argue over a new divine while the breach remains. The Inquisition could act when the Chantry cannot. Our followers would be part of that. There's so much we can... Forgive me. I doubt you came here for a lecture. Never in my fucking life will I choose a heart option with Cullen. Uh... No, not really. I hadn't planned on it, no. Then I shall spare you. Uh, there's still a lot of work ahead. Commander, Sir Ryden has a report on our supply lines. As I was saying. Hmm. I wonder if there was actually... Would he have, like, actually gone into a lecture there if I'd said, I don't mind? That seemed like an abrupt ending. I didn't think I was abruptly ending the conversation. I was just saying, I, like, I thought it was a jokey, no, I didn't really come here for a lecture kind of thing. Did you need something? Uh, right. Tell me about Templar life. I'd like to know more about the Templars. If you need insight into what the Order is doing now, I'm afraid I can't offer more than you already now. Anything else, I will answer as best I can. Is there a way to get rid of this purple shit around me? Because I feel like this is now, like, great if it's a thing in combat, but I feel like it shouldn't be still around me, out of combat, a long time later, having fast traveled back to Haven. Why did you become a Templar? Oh, that's right, because I wanted to hurt mages. Why did you join the Order? I could think of no better calling than to protect those in need. I used to beg the Templars at our local chantry to teach me. At first, they merely humored me. That must have shown promise, or at least a willingness to learn. Willingness to the fucking spoke to punch mages in the head. Car. They agreed to send me for training. I was 13 when I left home. That's not very old. 13? That's still so young. I wasn't the youngest there. Some children are promised to the order at infancy. Still, I didn't take on full responsibilities until I was 18. The order sees you trained and educated first. What about your family? And what about your family? Did you miss them? Of course. But there were many my age who felt the same. We learned to look out for one another. I assume you can, like, if you're trained up till you're 18 and then you're made a full member, even if you're sent there as a kid, you can still choose to leave at that point, I assume. If you haven't actually become a Templar yet. Uh, tell me about their vows. Do Templars take vows? I swear to the Maker to watch all the mages. That sort of thing. There's a vigil first. You're meant to be at peace during that time, but your life is about to change. When it's over, you'll give yourself to a life of service. That's when you're given a filter. Your first draft of Lyria and its power. As Templars, we are not to seek wealth or acknowledgement. Our lives belong to the maker and the path we have chosen. <laughs> Are there vows of celibacy? I fucking hope so. What do Templars do? Before coming here, my keeper suggested I avoid Templars. Do they do anything besides hunt mages? Templars protect against the dangers of magic. Before the Order left the Chantry, that meant serving in a circle. They were also tasked with tracking apostates or fighting demons never to be summoned by the weak or malicious. Oh boy, here we go. What do you think of mages? What do you think of mages? Are they all a threat? I've seen the suffering magic can inflict. I've treated mages with distrust because of it. 
Times without cause. Oh my god, he's actually admitting that? I will try not to do so here. Not that I want mages moving through our base completely unchecked. And then he ruins it. Including mages from possession. Well, I mean, that was a little bit of progress. He admits that he was wrong in the previous games. But then he fucking goes, Oh, but I still want to fucking profile all the mages. You've lived in the circle. You've lived in the circle. What was a typical day for a Templar there? <laughs> typical? The last time I was in a circle was right before it fell apart. Nothing was typical. Before that, then? Certain rituals require a full guard. A mage's howling. I've attended a few. Most of the time, you merely maintain a presence on patrol or in the circle, ready to respond if needed. Mages pretend to ignore that presence, but they're watching you just as closely. Do you not speak to the mages? Do Templars and mages never speak to each other? Some do, but Templars are supposed to maintain. Yeah, so they can fucking murder them all without the getting sad about it if the right of annulment is called. Quickly, without hesitation, your judgment cannot be clouded. Of course, ignoring one another does nothing to foster understanding. Gee, what a terrible system. If only someone could see what a fucking garbage system this is. What does Templar training involve? There is weapon and combat training. Even without their abilities, Templars are among the best warriors in Thedas. Initiates must also memorize portions of the Chant of Light, study history, and improve their mental focus. Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy your training? If I was giving my life to this, I would be the best Templar I could. You were a model student. <laughs> I wanted to be. I wasn't always successful. Watching a candle burn down while reciting the chant of transfigurations wasn't the most exciting task. I admit, my mind sometimes wandered. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Yes? I can't believe this motherfucker was like, yeah, I was super wrong in the past games, actually. But also, let's fucking make sure we keep a very close eye on every mage here. Like, do you see how many people are walking around with swords here? Like, anyone with a sword could go and fucking kill anyone else. Like, that's really no different. <laughs> why, why, why would you, why would you, oh, we must keep close eyes on the mages because they're pretty powerful. But then we also don't need to worry about all these motherfuckers with swords. Get to know you better. We are working together after all. What would you like to know? All right. Where are you from? What? Why has this come up? Hello? How to act for Eldon? This this has got to be a bug, right? Why would this randomly come up now? My esteemed Lady Sidonia, I'd like to take full responsibility for Lady Marshallette's odd behaviour of late. You see, we recently began the study of history. I thought it would do, do the young mistress some good to be exposed to all Theodosian cultures and not just all lay. It was a foolish thought. Regrettably, your dear daughter has taken a particular interest in Ferelden folklore. She first developed an affinity for King Callanhad, which seems to have devolved into borderline infatuation. She stared at me, eyes wide, when I told how he unified the barbarians with his allegedly incomparable might and charisma. Every time I tried to move the lesson on to something more important, she insisted I tell her again about Callanhad. How the Ferelden say his hair was twice as yellow as the sun, and his chin more chiselled than the tallest peak in the Frostbacks. Twice now I've had to tear down drawings she's tacked up in her bedroom of the man shirtless. Ha! <laughs> then we moved on to the werewolves, which was even worse. As you may already know, the Ferelden's venerate the folk heroes Dane and Hafter. Dane was said to have been a werewolf, and Hafter to have descended from one. No enlightened man or woman could ever view such beast people with anything but revulsion. But you know Ferelden's and their love of wildlife. Unfortunately, these tales of the Wolfmen set the little mistress's imagination afire. When she suggested we put on a play for you and her Lord Father, I could not say no. I'm afraid that's why Marshallette was running through the mansion, wearing wet furs and fighting the chambermaids. Oh, frightening the chambermaids. She was rehearsing a scene in which Hafter drives back the Darkspawn. I've been informed that some priceless family heirlooms were destroyed amidst all that confusion, and I cannot fully express my dismay. I understand if my abject failure as a tutor results in my immediate dismissal, a letter from Brother Bernard to his former employer. Yes, that has got to be a bug. What a what a random and weird one, though. Just in the middle of a conversation. Something completely unrelated pops up. I grew up in Ferelden near Hongwood. I was transferred to Kirkwall shortly after the Blight. This is the first I've returned in almost ten years. You were away a long time. 
You haven't seen Ferelden in ten years. Are you glad to be back? I was not sorry to leave at the time. I did not expect to return. Now, between the Divine's murder and the breach, I've arrived to find nothing but chaos. Uh, tell me about the Blight. You were in Ferelden during the Blight. Did you fight Darkspawn? No. I was stationed in Ferelden <laughs> no. in Circle Tower. No. Of course not. The circle had troubles of its own. I remained there during the Blight. Oh boy. What happened at the Circle? What happened at the Are you going to tell how a mage saved everyone? Sure. Tell me about Kirkwall. What was Kirkwall like? While I was there, Canari occupied and then attacked the city. The Viscount's murder caused political unrest. Relations between mages and Templars fell apart. The prostate threw up the champion. Fell apart. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, yes. They just fell apart. All on their own, you know? Nothing to do with me. It's not like I was the fucking person in charge, second in command to Meredith. It's not like I had anything to do with pushing things to their fucking breaking point. No, they just fell apart. Fuck me. What happened between Kirkwall's mages and Templars? You were at the Conclave. You must have heard people speak. Yes, but you were there. There was tension between mages and Templars long before I arrived. Eventually, it reached a breaking point. There was fighting in the All on its own! <laughs> yes, no, nothing to do with me! It was a nightmare. Fucking hell. What happened then? The Templars should have restored order. Red Lyrian had driven Knight Commander Meredith mad. Yeah, funny how you were still happily accepting orders from her for the fucking, like, eight years or whatever it was. How far she was gone. Too far. So you opposed her? I stood with the champion against her in the end. In the final fucking minute of the game, sure. Varix from Kirkwall. Man saw which way we the wind was blowing, realized that Meredith was about to lose, and decided, hmm, maybe I should not side with her and die as well. I will last second swap sides so that I can survive and get my sorry ass out of here. Varix from Kirkwall. Varix from Kirkwall. Did you two know each other? I knew he was friends with the champion of Kirkwall, but little else. We've spoken more since I joined the Inquisition, largely at Varix. Apparently, I spend too much time with a serious expression on your face, and it's bad for my health. I'll let you return to your work. Another time, then. Was there something you needed? Uh, anything I should know? Is there anything I should know? The Lord Seeker's actions are a mystery. The Templars will aid us. They cannot sit idle while the breach remains. Why did the Templars leave? Why would Templars break away from the Chantry? The Order believes the Chantry no longer supports their efforts. Not to the extent they should. What changed? But the Templars have served the Chantry for ages. And in that time, they've come to take the Order's services for granted. Templars risk their lives against blood magic, demons, abominations, to feel as if those efforts are dismissed. I may disagree with the Order's actions, but I'm here as proof of that. I sympathize with their frustrations. Tell me about your colleagues. What do you think of the people you work with? Who do you mean? Uh, how's working with Josephine? What do you think of our ambassador? We have little in common. How she delights in meeting with nobles all day is beyond me. But I enjoy working with her. What do you think of Leliana? How do you like working with Leliana? The Inquisition would not exist without her. I may not always agree with her man. She's more passionate about our cause than anyone. Cassandra may have declared the Inquisition publicly. And Liliana is just as responsible for its formation. Tell me about our soldiers. Are you satisfied with the Inquisition's forces? Our numbers are small, but they suit our needs for the time being. Some Templars have joined us instead of following the order. They've proven invaluable in training new recruits. I should let you get back to work. Was that everything? I think that was everything, right? Indeed. Uh, I asked that and I asked that. Yep, yeah, that's it. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. I do. Like, wondering why I still have this purple shit around me. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, is there any way to get rid of this? I really don't think there is, which kind of sucks because it's kind of distracting in conversations and shit. Like, yeah, don't know. Don't know if there's a way to get rid of that. Well, that is it for today. Holy shit, did that just say we're at 20 hours already? Oh, almost. 19 and a quarter. Holy fuck. <laughs>
I that yeah, that's gone very quickly. What the shit? Wait, why is the most recent save in the Frostback Mountains? What? I click save. Oh, duh, I am in the Frostback Mountains. Wait, no. Oh, that's time. That's the time. <laughs> that's not 19 hours played. Oh, the time played is on the actual file itself, 1849. Okay, they happen to be really similar. That's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, right, cool. Well, I mean, that's still pretty close to 20 hours. Doesn't really feel like it, but I guess I did spend a lot of time dicking around in Hinterlands and Storm Coast. But uh, we are definitely on a bit of a story track at the moment, so we will continue with that next time. Uh, and, I don't know, we'll maybe people that I've already spoken to will have more to say now that we've done a main mission kind of thing. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Head back in, set off new missions on the table, all that jazz, and yeah, see where things take us. That is it for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, if you could leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share the videos around, share the playlist around if you can. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you next time for more Dragon Age Inquisition. Thanks for watching. See you then.